What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Now apologies for the lack of uploads recently. Uh, like I said in the previous video, I'm extremely busy. I've got about a week and a half left of online classes and then I'll be good to go with making videos again. Uh, but we have some really cool news. If you weren't aware, the other day on Twitter, someone found out that if you uh, know how to like hack in items to the game, uh, you can get access to this item, which is likely in the DLC that will change the ability of your Pokemon to the hidden ability, as you can see right there. The score bunny had its ability changed from Blaze to Libero. So that's something that we previously didn't have in the game. And considering that you're able to make all old Pokemon uh, legal in the new games, and all it does is really is erase their moves and not their abilities, it makes sense that they would finally add this. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be discussing all of the Pokemon that this is going to affect within the upcoming metagame, because we know a lot of the legendaries are coming back in the Crown Tundra DLC, uh, so I'll just be giving my thoughts on all these hidden abilities that we're going to be seeing, because some of them are, are never before seen, but a lot of them are pretty underwhelming. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed this at any point in time, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, let's shoot for 150 today, and let's get into it. So we're going to start off with the unreleased abilities of Pokemon that we already have. Uh, that would be the Fossil Pokemon. Now, Slush Rush Arctivish is one of the more interesting ones, because if you weren't aware, at level 50, if you double its speed either by Tailwind or by the new ability Slush Rush, with an adamant nature it hits 107 speed, which means that this thing would be able to actually outspeed uh, Jolly Max Speed Dragapult, which seems like it's it's made by it's made by design, like that's that's how it's meant to be, uh, which is pretty interesting. I, I honestly don't see Arctivish picking up too much, but it does help a lot with hail teams in general, uh, because you now have two very good Slush Rush abusers, one of them being able to use Bolt Beak and one of them being able to use uh, Ficious Rend. Now, I think that Hail just gets a little bit stronger because of this. Personally, I don't think Hail is ever going to be 100% viable, but uh, this is this is a really good buff to both of these Pokemon. They didn't have anything like Hustle or Strong Jaw before. Uh, they just had these static Volt Absorb, Water Absorb, Ice Body abilities. So uh, they, they only get better. It, it seems that this is the optimal way to run them. So I think that that's pretty interesting. Arctazolt, Arctivish, they both get the Slush Rush ability and they're going to be a little bit scarier. Now, for the other two fossils that we're already seeing pretty high usage, uh, they get Sand Rush. Now, personally, I feel that the one that benefits the most from this is likely going to be Dracovish. Now, it's it's kind of regarded, it, it, these two are regarded as pretty scary offensive threats in the metagame at the moment. Uh, and Dracozolt, I think, is widely regarded as being better than Dracovish at this point, just because it's able to Dynamax and deal massive damage with that Hustle ability. However, Dracovish... Um, by running Slut or Sand Rush over Strong Jaw, uh, you do lose 50% power on your Ficious Rend, which is the one move that this really matters towards. However, because you're no longer locked by, <laughs> you, because you're no longer running Choice Scarf, you're free to run Choice Band. So you can throw this thing on a Sand Team. Like this is one of the coolest Sand Rush abusers that we've had in the game, like ever. Uh, I think the only other non-ground or rock type that we've had with Sand Rush is. Um, not, not Herdier, um, Stoutland, Stoutland. And Stoutland is kind of underwhelming because it's just like a, a normal type with decent coverage. This is a really interesting one because one of the things that uh, sand teams don't really like to deal with are water types. And you just kind of have like a very good defensive switch into water types now. You times four resist it and you're also just able to abuse the sand as an offensive Pokemon. You can choice ban this thing, which is scary. You could also run a life orb, but the fact of the matter is, because you now have double speed without an item, uh, you're able to free this thing up to run lots of different items, like life orb, you can run assault vest. Uh, it sort of just opens up Dracovish to being more than, well, it's still a one trick pony, but at least you know, like you can run different different sets on it, which is, is, which is really cool. So I actually like that a lot. Next up, we have Dracozolt. Now, Dracozolt is sort of the same. However, um, I think that it benefits sand teams just a little bit more because it now is a direct check to those water types that you're having trouble dealing with. Like, uh, for example, Ty Tyranitar and Excadrill, neither of them like dealing with Milotic. Like, it isn't it isn't a very good matchup. But now that you have Sand Rush, uh, you're always going to be faster than things like Milotic, like Inteleon, uh, and you have 100 base attack, so you can just run like Jolly Max attack, and you have your Bolt Beak doubled, so it's going to be pretty much impossible for them to switch into that hit with any Pokemon and take it well. You can even run the Life Orb like you have been on this thing when you Dynamax. It's no longer like an amazing Dynamax candidate because it loses the Hustle, uh, but now it's able to function outside the Dynamax without risking a miss, which is really cool. I mean, it, it always could have avoided that by running Volt Absorb, but now you have like an ability that helps you out in a different way rather than just being immune to electric hits, which you already times four resist. 
Next up we have Entei. Now, Entei I'm pretty certain is coming back in the DLC since this DLC is focused around legendary Pokemon, and because we can give it the hidden ability, now it has Inner Focus. Now that's actually really cool, because Inner Focus got buffed this gen, you're immune to flinch and intimidate. So this thing is actually a really scary physical attacker. With base 115 attack and 100 speed, it's, it's like decent, right? It's got amazing bulk, to be honest. 115 HP, 85, 75, that's, that's pretty amazing bulk for an offensive Pokemon. But it also gets access to Sacred Fire. Now, a very, very threatening set would be sung along the lines of Choice Band, Sacred Fire, Extreme Speed. Um, it doesn't get Earthquake, which is really annoying, but it does get a whole lot of really good moves like Iron Head uh, and, well, Stomping Tantrum. I guess that would make the most sense as a set for this thing. But now that it's able to run Choice Band and have no fear of Intimidate and also no fear of getting burnt because it's a fire type, there's like no way of lowering this thing's attack short of running, I don't know, Growl or uh, Max Wormwind. Like, th th that's the only way you're going to be lowering this thing's attack, which is amazing. Like, this thing is now a very scary Pokemon to face, uh, and I'm very excited to use it next to, like, Tapu Bulu or Rillaboom, whichever one ends up being better. Um, I feel like Tapu Bulu plus Entei could be really, really scary, just because this thing, ugh, just being immune to Intimidate, it's so awesome. And you also have the 50% chance to burn on Sacred Fire. Hell, you could run a Life Orb on this thing, and it'd still be terrifying. I like that a lot. Entei is going to be really scary. Suicune switches from Pressure to Inner Focus. Um, it doesn't really gain much here. I personally would still run Pressure because this thing is so bulky, you're mostly going to be focusing on taking hits and surviving it. Like the, I mean, I don't think anyone's going to run Physical Suicune. It's immune to flinch, I guess. Like That's the only buff it gets, so I don't think it's worth talking about much further than that. Uh, there isn't much to it. Next up, we have Inner Focus Raikou. Once again, very low attack stat, doesn't change much. I would run Pressure if I were running it, but I suppose being immune to flinch is really nice. Um, you don't have to run a physical attacker, like just being immune to flinch is okay. You can run Thunderbolt, the standard set that you have been, Extra Sensory, Aura Sphere. Like it's it's just another special attacker that's immune to flinch. Like that's it, there isn't much to it. Now these three, these are the scary ones. Landorus now gets Sheer Force, Sheer Force. Moves with secondary effects now have a free life orb on them, with the secondary effects being nullified. Keep in mind that this thing has 101 speed, 115 special attack, you can run a timid nature with a life orb, and you ignore the life orb because you have because you have sheer force, and it has amazing coverage, it has earth power, it has sludge wave, or sludge bomb I suppose is the better one for doubles, it has extra sensory, it has all these amazing moves, it has psychic too. It is such a disgustingly strong Pokemon. And now that we have uh, the ability to Dynamax these things, it could even just run like a physical set if it wanted to, or a mixed set. You could run Fly, because it's like the only good flying move it gets. I think it's the only flying move it gets that does damage. But being able to run Fly with like a, let's say like Naive, for a mixed attacker, that's doing disgusting amounts of damage and boosting your speed. I think Landers is gonna be a very terrifying Pokemon if we um, don't have things that check it immediately. Uh, I suppose maybe Milotic will come back just for Ice Beam and how bulky it is. It can definitely take special lander hits, but we're, this is this thing's gonna be scary. I can I can tell you that it's gonna be one of a top one of the top tier Pokemon. Thunderous is a very interesting case. Thunderous and Tornadus both get the ability Defiant, which is I guess in a way a direct nerf to uh, Incineroar, which is kind of cool. I mean I don't think Incineroar's busted this gen. I think it's just fine. Uh, however, they have pretty respectable attack stats. Uh, Thunderous in particular has 111 speed, 115 attack. You'd run this thing with a Jolly Nature, and keep in mind if you're running it with uh, Defiant, you now lose out on Prankster. Uh, and I don't think that matters too much for Thunderous, like you miss out on Prankster Nasty Plot, Prankster Thunder Wave, but your high speed kind of makes up for that. It's got actually a really nice physical move pool. You're, you're able to run Fly, you're able to run uh, Wild Charge, and um, you can also run Super Power and probably just protect as your final move, or maybe Thunder Wave if you wanted to. However, this thing just became a very threatening physical attacker. Um, think about it like Braviary, but better. <laughs> it's faster. Uh, it doesn't hit quite as hard without the Defiant boost, but it's also um, it's also half electric type, so it has Stab on Wild Charge. So this thing's a very threatening Pokemon. I can see it running a Life Orb or something. Um, it's just going to be a very scary Pokemon to switch in on. Uh, you now I can, just that just having these two genies with Defiant uh, automatically makes Intimidate a little bit less viable. I don't think that Defiant uh, is going to be optimal for Tornadus in particular uh, because it has the same attack stat, it has the same physical flying move, um, but this is a Pokemon that wants to use Tailwind. I personally feel that you're going to want to run this thing with a Prankster ability if anything, but I suppose that a physical set with this would probably be something the lines of Super Power, Fly, Protect, Tailwind. Like that, that would be it. And probably a Life Orb. 
I don't think that this one's going to be amazing. I think it's going to be better without its hidden ability, just because Prankster Tailwind is amazing. But these guys, with their hidden ability, they are scary as all hell. Articuno, it gets Snowcloak. We're not talking about you. You're bad. I, I love Articuno. I'm not an Articuno hater. I ran Articuno with Pressure in 2018 and uh, Adrenaline Orb to help check Lander's Theory, and it was okay. However, the Evasiveness boost in Hail, once again, Hail, not amazing. Now, this one matters. Static. 30% chance to make things paralyzed as soon as they make contact with you. That's actually really cool. Uh, Zapdos has notoriously been run as a defensive special, found, like a, a very defensive special attacker. Uh, so being able to switch in on physical hits, being able to possibly paralyze fake out Pokemon like Incineroar, like, or I guess Hitmontop isn't really common, but um, like Rillaboom, you're able to just switch in on any hit you really need to and have that chance to paralyze. And I believe it also gets Hurricane in the DLC. I can't confirm that, but uh, I remember hearing something about this thing finally getting Hurricane. Uh, so I think Static is a really nice thing for it, mostly because it's going to be running a lot of physical bulk. It's going to be able to take those hits and it has that chance to paralyze. It's probably objectively better than Pressure, uh, but yeah. Next up, we have Moltres. Moltres gets Flame Body. Now, this one could be okay. Um, I think it's better than Pressure because now you have the chance to burn. We could see more physically defensive Moltres popping up. However, I believe Moltres only really had success on Rain teams in 2018. And I believe one Kyogre team, not Kyogre, one team in uh, 2019 where, yeah, yeah, it was it was a Kyogre team in 2019 during Moon series. Uh, it was used to check Ferrothorn. So that's really the only niche it has, uh, being like a solid fire Pokemon on Rain teams. But with Charizard around, eh, maybe just run Charizard. This thing has Flame Body though, so you could run it a little bit more defensively. You could give it uh, Heat Wave, I suppose, Fly, or not Fly, Hurricane, because that's the that's the thing it has. It, it had 100% accurate Hurricane in the rain, uh, so that was something interesting. Probably just Protect and Tailwind at that point. Uh, but yeah, I think that this thing is just going to be run with a little bit more bulk now that it has the chance to burn, but I, I think that's more of a buff for singles, if anything. Tapu Bulu. It's better with Grassy Surge. Telepathy doesn't really protect it from anything besides Sludge Wave, really. Like, if you want to run a Sludge Wave Pokemon next to it, now you can't hit your partner, but that's about it. Tapu Fini, it's one of the few Pokemon that could do without its ability, however, it, that would only be in singles. In in doubles, Misty Surge, it's objectively the best Misty Surge Pokemon, so you're going to keep that. Tapu Koko, it wants to keep Electric Surge. You could maybe run it with Telepathy if you want to run like Tapu Koko Landorus, so you don't end up hitting yourself. And it has a respectable attack stat, so you could try something like Max Speed, Max Attack, Wild Charge, or just special attacking Thunderbolt. Like, it's it's a fast Pokemon, so it's it's always going to be decent. Um, but however, I think it's better with Electric Surge, but you could use Telepathy to avoid Earthquakes from your partner. Tapu Lele, it's, it's going to run Psychic Surge. It is the best Psychic Surge Pokemon in the game. It beats both Indeedees by a long, long margin. So, yeah. I believe that's all of the VGC legal Pokemon this year that are going to have their hidden abilities. Uh, keep in mind, there are more Pokemon that get their hidden abilities now, like Dialga. However, that won't be legal until presumably like two generation or two years from now, or maybe one year, uh, whenever we do GS Cup. However, these are the most important Pokemon, the ones that are going to be legal. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section down below. Let me know what Pokemon you're most excited to use. What are your opinions on these Pokemon? Uh, be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a nice one. Bye.